This particular video is being recorded in a slightly different manner to how I usually do on my channel for unboxings and I need you guys at home to tell me whether you prefer the style I'm doing today or my bog standard style unboxings. It's just a few little tweaks in my creativity to see if I can really up the game of a standard boring unboxing. back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly, so if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So today's unboxing comes from none other than the lovely Andy Orms over at So Many Legs. Now So Many Legs is a company I adore. I have never in my entire experience had issues with this company whatsoever. I've never had a DOA. I've never had problems with communication. These guys are absolutely fantastic. Now you can see the box has taken some damage here. Now this is just our typical Royal Mail service. Now I have no doubts whatsoever that the tarantulas are fine and healthy inside because of how Andy packs them. So the box always comes with fragile tape attached to it as well as the sticker saying live invertebrates handle with care something highly important when posting live animals across the uk even if they are simply feeder insects but that's not what we've got in today's box oh no 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 today we have got two tarantulas chosen by myself this is not a mystery box these were tarantulas that i chose to purchase now to put money towards these tarantulas, I actually did a trade with so many legs. They purchased a large amount of my Porcelio Lavis Dairy Cow isopods. So if you spot them there on Andy's website, they are Bug Realms bred isopods. So please, please, please check him out. Buy some off him because you'll love them. But you guys aren't here to hear me yibber and yabber, jibber and jabber. You are here for me to get this box open. So let's do this now. Now this wouldn't be done in true Bug Realms fashion if I wasn't finding some weird instrument to open the box with. So as we did in the previous unboxing, I'm just using my secateurs that I normally use for bramble picking to get for my stick insects. Now as I'm opening the box here, you will see why the tarantulas are safe inside. You can see all the packing peanuts here. You can see the safety of the packing within this box. So a few little dents on the outside really isn't actually going to affect the content here. They're warm, they're padded, they're happy. So now comes to the fun part of taking out the pots. So as you can see here, we have a Formictus auratus. And then our second spider of the day that I'm super stoked about is the Nandu Colorado Velosus. Now both these tarantulas actually currently either are or have been at some stage in my collection. So why purchase them? Well stick around in the video and I'll explain to you why those choices were made as we are doing the rehousings for these beautiful animals. So with the Auratus coming first, we have chosen a 20 centimeter cubed Mantis Den, not for Mantis range enclosure. Crystal clear, beautiful design, highly recommended enclosures. If you didn't realize through Realm Furb, I completely stocked up on these beauties. So let's get a design in place for this tarantula. Now I personally like to pat down the substrate as I do it. They do like a bit of a firmer surface and if they want to kind of pull that substrate out or bulldoze it, they can do so in their own way, the way that they choose to do it. But having that firmness gives them a stable ground to stand on that they much prefer. But I'm gonna add a little bit more substrate in here because they do like to burrow now and again, and all spiders, whether they are pet rocks that sit on the top or not, should be given the opportunity to burrow if they wish. So we're gonna have a slightly sloped background here. And then we move on to a bit of design work. Now the design work is pretty simplistic. We just need a hide, a water dish that I like to add in after the spider goes in, and then also a bit of decor bits, bit of leaves, bit of moss, this and that. So on the overview of the appearance, what do you guys think of this one? We've got a, a really nice, large, but very shaded hide using two pieces of cork bark. Uh, I've tried to keep the mossy and 
decor parts to the side there and at the back leaving room for a water dish to go at the very front. Top tip for tea keepers, especially if you're new, is keep your water dish easily accessible, whether that is by the front door so you can simply open and water or whether it's somewhere below a hole or vent system that you can spray or drip down into because trust me, I've put them in complicated places before and it's made it very, very difficult on watering day to top that up without the tarantula bolting, escaping, or constantly burying the dish in places I just cannot access to get it back out again. Overall, I am fairly chuffed with this enclosure. I think it's simplistic, but awesome and practical at the same time. So now we are gonna get our P auratus in there. And while we're doing so, I'll tell you the story about why I got this tarantula. So the Pioratus is a tarantula I do currently own, but I only have a sling around about three centimeters. I love my Formictopus. I've started loving them more and more as time goes on. And I just could not be patient enough to wait for this sling to grow. This sling was gifted to me um, by one of my financial supporters. I believe it might've been Exotics Empire, but I could be wrong. I apologize if I've got the wrong person there. Um, but he has been a, a great help to me. He's the guy that supplies my sling pots, a video I still need to do about properly so that you guys know where you can get your own custom sling pots from. Now, however much I love this sling, and it is one I plan on keeping in the realm all the way through to adulthood if I can, my impatience got the better of me and I thought I need one of these bigger and I need it now. And while I had money in the bank of so many legs, I thought, this is a tarantula that's just come up on the market. This is one I'm gonna go for. And although this one is unsexed, if I'm lucky enough for it to be a girl, we might well have our sling end up being a boy, which would work out perfectly. However, if this older one is a boy, then if the small one's a girl, it's not gonna work out. He would have hooked out and died by the time the other one grew up. But that's no problem, it's no problem, because if this one does end up being a boy, I've got a lot of contacts now for breeding loans. So he will continue his cycle of life, at least I hope so. Now this tea did give me a little bit of a runaround. I kind of guessed the size of the enclosure a little bit wrong compared to the size of the pot, meaning I had to kind of rest the pot on top of the hide, which was a little bit tricky but I kept the door almost closed and used a straw. Now we use straws or paint brushes so that if the tea were to bite, it's not gonna break or harm its fangs on a softer surface. Now, if you saw my skinny legs unboxing of the Cancerides, the Formiculus Cancerides, you would have noticed that I talked about how it webbed so quickly as soon as it practically got in there from the pot to its spinnerets, to the substrate, to the leaves. Well, in this case, we had something very, very similar. It had webbed from the edge of the pot while leaving the pot while I was trying to remove it with the straw and it kept on to its spinnerets and it dragged it around the enclosure a little. You can see on the rim of this pot here where the silk was. It's absolutely fascinating how quickly these guys can produce web for safety reasons. Now it is very, very important to add a water dish to all of your tarantula's enclosures. You may have watched a lot of my videos and not seen them, but that's because I add them in after rehousings and after the footage is taken normally. So it's really, really important. I keep a collection of different size pots, all for different size enclosures here too. Before I add it in, let's try and get some shots of the Formictopus auratus before we move on to the Colorado Velosus. Now, although this shot's kind of silhouetted because of the angle of the light, I'm leaving it in so you guys can see the strands of silk coming across there. This is seconds after I have just spoke to you, just after we had talked about the silk attached to the pot, and it's already stranded all the way across. So here we have the Auratus. Now, it's very, very similar to the Cancerides that we do have as well similar markings, similar appearance, but I really do love the golden specks on the carapace. I love how bulky these spiders get. I love the attitudes they have. I just love everything about them. Now as slings, these guys are brown, whereas some other Formictopus from other localities, such as the Atrichromatus or the South Hispaniola, they actually come out blue. Their slings 
are blue, kind of like your Carabena Versicolor kind of blue. But these guys, they're brown throughout. So we're going to go back in better lighting to that webbing now. Hopefully the tarantula will move and you can see the strands and how they move. Look at all those several different strands in different directions. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Now this tarantula already has a really large plump abdomen so I don't think we're going to be featuring any feeding clips today. But look at it. It's a bit of a monster. See if we can see some fangs. You can just about see them although they're not fully out. More webbing shots. I love webbing shots. So before we move on to our Nandu Colorado Velosis, I would just like to say another massive thanks to Andy Orms for this beautiful specimen. And you guys let me know what you think in that comment section below. God, it's a cracker, isn't it? Can't wait to do a feeding video of these guys in the future. That's another thing I'd like you guys to let me know about as well. Would you like to see a new feeding video, perhaps Fatal Fang Styly, where I edit it together with music and try and create the best production that I can. Okay, so now it's time for the all important check to see the size of the tarantula before picking what size home to go for. Okay. From my observation, I think we need to go bigger. I could be wrong, but I think we need to go bigger. So let's go for a, not for mantis range, mantis den enclosure, large terrestrial. So with this design finished, minus water dish, you can see that I kind of went for more of that forest floor effect, the fallen log type look with the moss that's grown over it over the years, the leaf litter scattered across the ground. Again, basic but beautiful. You do not always need something super fancy to make your enclosure really stand out. So now while we rehouse the Nandu Colorado Velosus, let me tell you why I chose this particular tarantula. Well you see, I did have a Nandu Colorado Velosus in the collection. Uh, I think I got it passed on about a year ago now because it hooked out as mature male. I sent it to a good friend of mine for breeding and then I sold it after for further breeding with another breeder. Now the original gentleman that took on this for a breeding loan has not had anything come of it yet, but that's not to say there isn't a really slow development. Likelihood is that tarantula should at least visibly be gravid by now, but you never know. Some of these new world species are quite difficult and my experience on breeding is next to none, so I can't really highlight much on that. Now I tend to have bad luck with Nandus, nearly all of them matured male of each species of the genus that I owned. So now I purposely look for females because I enjoy them and I want to keep them longer. So I have a female Chromatus, a female Carapoensis and now a female Colorado Velosus. So I need to get my hands on a female Tripepi and then I am sorted. Although there are talks of things like species red, I'm not too bothered about that one. In my personal keeping, the four of the genus is what I'm truly after. So what can you say except for, wow, a big old female. Now I remember my mature male, he was um, smaller bodied than this, but longer legged. And he had quite blatant tibial hooks on his legs as well. But she is much broader than he was. And that's what I also love about females of this species. Like many tarantula species, the females are the bulk and the men are all legs. Kind of the opposite to human nature, in fact. And that's not to say that you can't get some feminine men or bulky women, I'm just saying. In fact, I'll shut up before I dig myself a hole. You guys who know me know what I mean. Now, never be mistaken by a Nandu. I actually just dropped the latch on the door, it fell open and it instantly went from here down to here in a heartbeat. So close to losing that spider then. Well, not losing it, 
by having it run along and down onto my legs. And with a girl of this size, I don't want that to happen. Hello. High five. High five. High five. So there she is, our Nandu Colorado Velosus, all housed. So with a macro lens on, we can have a true look at those reddish hairs against that white and black kind of body. Really, really cool. Something I really admire about this species too. Fantastic. So guys, honestly, coming to the end of this video, I found recording with just a singular camera, having a swap and change and do all this and that, actually quite tricky. Um, I don't know how well this is going to turn out on YouTube, which is why I kind of need your feedback to know if this extra effort is really worth it. I'm hoping the video turns out okay, it could be a complete mess, in which case we can laugh about it together. But over time I will be able to master this style if this is what you prefer, a lot more kind of talking over actual shots. Like I said, I don't know how it's going to turn out. Now we didn't have masses and masses of looks at these spiders, but we will feature them again in the future, hopefully in some feeding videos too. I don't want to stress them out more than they need to when they've literally just entered their new homes. So I'd like to take the light away from them, allow them to be placed on their shelves and make their home a home before I bring the camera back out on them again. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.